Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. This is Deep and today I am going to explain the folder structure of our Vue.js admin templates. In this video, I will use Material Vue.js admin template for explaining the folder structure, but please keep in mind that the folder structure is same for all our Vue.js admin templates. So without any delay, let's head to the VS Code and take a look at our folder structure. Our first directory is .vs Code. This directory is used to maintain VS Code settings and configurations. Inside this directory, you can see we have created some code snippets for our admin template. For example, this is our template code snippet. Whenever user will use this code snippet, it will create a template block in the view file. Like this, we have created so many code snippet. Please feel free to explore all the code snippets and use them accordingly in your project. Apart from the code snippets, in this directory, we have also two other files, extension.json and settings.json. Extension.json contains a list of recommended VS Code extensions and the settings.json contains a settings related to the VS Code. We recommended using VS Code for our admin template, but if you are using any other ID rather than VS Code, please feel free to delete this directory. The next directory is public. This directory is used to serve the public assets. The next directory is SRC. It is the source folder for our admin template. Inside this, you can find the first directory at the red core. At the red core directory is the heart of our admin template. It contains components, composables, styles, stores, and many other things related to our admin template. Users are not allowed to modify any files inside this directory because while updating this template to the latest version, users will be instructed to replace this directory with the latest at the red core directory. Moving inside this directory, you can find the first directory's components. But before moving to this directory, it is important to note that we also have the components directory inside our SRC. This directory contains fully customizable components. You can customize these components as per your requirement. You can also add or remove the components inside this directory. Going back to our components directory inside at the red core. This directory contains the components that are of generic type. It means these components aren't going to be changed in terms of functionality or UI. Still, if you want to customize this component, please copy the component and move it inside our components directory of SRC. Here, you can customize these components as per your requirement. All the components in both the components directory are auto-imported in our template. Our next directory is composable. Same as the components, we also have the composables directory inside our SRC. This directory contains composables. You can customize these composables as per your requirement. You also have the freedom to add or remove composables inside this directory. Moving inside, we can see the file useapi.ts. Useapi is the custom instance of our who use usefetch composable. We will use this composable for making an API call throughout our admin template. Now focusing on our composable directory inside at the red core. Here you can find the composables and these composables are of generic type. This means typically you won't need to modify these composables. Please feel free to explore all these composables and utilize them in your project. All the composables in both the composable directory are auto imported in our template. The next directory is libs. This directory contains configurations for our third party libraries. Inside this, you will find two subdirectories, Apex Chart and Chart.js. First of all, let's focus on Apex Chart. This directory contains a file Apex Chart config.ts. This file contains a functions for all kind of Apex Charts and each function returns a Apex Chart config for a specific chart type. For example, this is our function get bar chart config and this function will return Apex Chart config for a bar chart. So whenever you want to create a bar chart using Apex Chart, just import this function and you will have the configs ready. So no need to rewrite the configs each time you want to create the chart. Just import the relevant function and you are ready to go. We have implemented the same for the chart chess. Please explore its directory for more details. The next directory is SCSS. This directory contains SCSS style files for our admin template. Inside this, you will find two subdirectories, base and template. Base directory contains base level style for our admin template and the template directory contains styles for our admin template. We also override the base level styles inside template directory. The next directory is stores. This directory contains a pinya stores. Inside this, you will find a file config.ts. It is a pinya store for our theme configs. This store manages theme configurations in our template. We keep initial theme config in our theme config.ts file. To update this config on a runtime, we will use this store. If you are interested more about how we can update the configs on a runtime, please check out our the customizer component. You will find the implementation related details in that component. The next directory is utils. Like components and composable, we also have the utils directory inside our SRC. In this directory, we have defined utils for our admin template. 
you can customize these utils as per your requirement. You also have the freedom to add or remove utils from this directory. Going back to our utils directory inside Etheret core, this directory contains generic utils and hence you don't need to modify these utils. Please feel free to explore all these utils and use them in your project. Please note that all the utilities inside this both utils directory are auto imported in our template. The next directory is Etheret layouts. It is a view plugin for layouts. Let's go inside this directory and explore it further. First directory inside Etheret layouts is components. This directory contains unstyled layout components. Moving further, we have next directory plugins. This directory contains plugins for our layouts. Inside this file, you can check the file asl.ts. We use this plugin for access control on our layout component. It checks if user have access to view specific layout component or not. Moving next, our next directory is stores. This directory contains a pinya store for our layout configs. This store manages the layout configs in our admin template. The last directory is styles. This directory contains a style files for our layouts. Our next directory is assets. This directory contains assets for our admin template. Inside this, you will find two subdirectories, images and styles. Images directory holds all the images for our admin template. Style directory is used to override our template styles. Inside this, you will find a subdirectory variables. This directory is used for overriding our variables. Inside this subdirectory, you will find two files, template.scss and beautify.scss. If you want to override beautify variable, please use beautify.scss file. Otherwise, please use template.scss file. If you want to write the custom styles for our admin template, please use the styles.scss file. Moving forward, we already have covered these two directories, components and composables prior in this video. So our next directory is layouts. This directory defines the layouts for our admin template. Moving inside, we can find a subdirectory components. In this directory, we have defined the components for our layouts. Apart from this directory, we have two other files, blank.view and default.view. These two files are for our two different type of layouts, blank layout and default layout. Blank.view is for a blank layout and default.view is for our default layout. Moving forward, we have the next directory navigation. In this directory, we have defined all the menu items for our admin template. Inside this, you can find two subdirectories, horizontal and vertical. All the menu items for horizontal menu are defined in the horizontal directory and all the menu items for vertical menu are defined inside the vertical directory. The next directory is pages. This directory contains all the pages of our admin template. Please note that we have implemented Nox-like file-based routing in our admin template. So whenever user will create a new file inside the pages directory, routes for that file will be generated automatically. The next directory is plugins. This directory contains all the plugins of our admin template. Let's go inside this directory and check out the plugins. First plugin is router. This plugin integrates router in our admin template. The next plugin is castle. We use this plugin for access control in our template. The next plugin is fake API. In this plugin, we have set up our mock server for mocking API calls. Inside this directory, you can find two subdirectories, handlers and utils. Inside the handlers directory, we have defined all our fake API endpoints and fake data for our admin template. Inside the utils directory, we have defined all the utils for our mock server. You can also add or remove utils from this directory. Our next plugin is IITN. We use this plugin for internationalization in our template. The next plugin is Iconify. It is used for generating icons in our template. The next plugin is Beautify. Beautify is our component library and we register Beautify as a plugin in our template. The next plugin is Pinya. We use Pinya for managing stores in our template and here we register Pinya as a plugin in our template. The next plugin is Layouts. We register Layouts as a plugin in our template. And the last plugin is webfontloader.ts. It manages fonts inside our template. You might have noticed that we have applied some prefix before some plugin names. For example, we have applied prefix 1 before router and 2 before pinion. These prefixes are for priority. It means, first of all, router plugin will be registered and then after the pinion will be registered and after that all the plugins will be registered in their order. The next directory is utils. We have already covered this utils prior in this video. The next directory is views. This directory contains all the components of our pages. We also have two other files in our folder structure app.view and main.ts. App.view is the main view file of our template. And the main.ts is the main entry point of our admin template. By this, we have completed our src directory. Apart from this, we also have some other files in our folder structure. But we will take a look at some important files. Our first important file is .editor config. In this file, we have defined configs for our editor. 
The next important file is .aslint.rc.cjs. In this file, we have defined ASLint rules for our admin template. The next important file is index.html. It is the index file for our template. The next important file is themeconfig.ts. In this file, we have defined our initial theme configurations. The last and most important file is wit.config.ts. In this file, we have defined our wit configurations. By this, we have completed the folder structure of our material Vue.js admin template. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you next time.